that sudden despair Like sorrow and like grieving So live it the best way you can After all, it's swiftly leaving Hey guys, this is Paul with SlasherIndex.com here to bring you another VHS review. I think it's been, what, two, three weeks since I did the Meat Cleaver Massacre review. Um, I've just been busy with school as I had told you guys in the previous video I uploaded last night. Here I have Poor White Trash 2. Now I had said that I wanted to do Headless Eyes and I really planned on doing Headless Eyes by a Wizard Video. But this morning I was in the mood of watching something new and I've been really curious of this movie. So I popped this in. So, um, let's see, here we have a big box by Magnum Entertainment. The picture's pretty crisp on my box. You, might, you guys might have saw this in my uh, previous uh, VHS update. It looks pretty new. There's no rental stickers or anything on the box. So, the artwork is, is nice. You got this girl who's running from this shadow in the woods of a guy holding an axe, as you can see there. I like that. It looks cool. The title of the movie, as I, already always, as I already said, was Poor White Trash 2. Now, the original theatrical title was Scum of the Earth. I'm guessing Magnum Entertainment wanted to give this movie more of a sleazy kind of title, and I think Poor White Trash is a much better title than Scum of the Earth because, as I'll soon tell you guys, there's only really one scummy person in the movie. I mean, there are a couple other people that are kind of, gr kind of grimy, but I wouldn't call all of them scum. So, some of you might be wondering, well, where is Poor White Trash 1? Well, Poor White Trash 1 was released under Continental Video label, under the big box. And they actually also retitled the movie. It was actually called Bayou, I believe. And they retitled it Poor White Trash just to give it a more of a sleazy name. So, the movie was directed by a guy named S.F. Brownrig, who had probably made about five or ten other movies. Also, like, horror and weird kind of, I don't know, exploitation kind of movies. Um... You might recognize a couple of titles like Don't Go Into the Basement or Don't Open the Door, things like that. He had actually planned to do a sequel, well he wanted to do a sequel of uh, Todd Browning's Freaks, which I thought was kind of cool because his last name is really similar to Todd Browning's, um, Browning's Brown Rig. So. The movie was made in 1974, and that was around the time the Texas Chainsaw Massacre came out. So this movie was ahead of its time. It wasn't trying to imitate anybody. It starts with a couple going to a cabin in the woods, and you might be thinking, wow, that, that happens in a lot of movies. But considering the year it came out, it really didn't copy anybody. It just wanted to start off that way. So you got this married couple, newlywed. They go into a cabin in the woods. She goes into the cabin. The guy's outside. I forget what he's doing, but he gets an axe in the back. So the girl goes runs screaming after she sees her husband with the axe in the back, and she eventually bumps into some redneck hick guy named Otis, or what the characters in the movie call him Pick, because his last name is was it Picket or something like that. And you think, oh well, this is a movie about rednecks and stuff, so he's got to be the guy who killed him. But, as you soon find out, he's not the killer, nor is his family. Eventually brings this girl named Telen to a house where he lives with the rest of his family, which consists of his second wife, his two children, um, the daughter named Sarah, and the retarded son named Bo. That ain't so. I brought home two fish yesterday, didn't I? The retarded son, who's played by Charles Dell, I believe, was the most successful actor or person on the entire crew for this movie. He's still doing um, a lot of extras in movies and a lot of minor roles in television shows. So the second wife's name is, um, I forget her name, but she's like the sweetheart in the movie. The other two people, the two uh, children of Otis, he isn't, they aren't like um, cruel like the father. I mean, Sarah kind of has an attitude problem. They're all older, like teenage kids. And Bo is like this retarded hick. Now, in every hick movie, you gotta have retard. And this guy Bo seems to be the retard. He has a straw hat and all, overalls and everything. So, he's the retard in this movie. So, the, they bring the girl home, and it's kind of like the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, where this family really frightens the hell out of this girl. And she just wants to leave. She's like, you know what? You don't have a telephone. You said you had a telephone. I'm just gonna leave. I need to go. And then he tells her, listen. If you try to go into those woods to find someone else with a phone, you're going to bump into that guy who killed your husband. And she gets scared, and she has to end up staying there. So she tries to stay there the night, but this guy Otis is really causing problems in the family. He's getting drunk. He's drinking from these jars of some kind of alcohol. And what happens is that the second wife, who's this really sweet lady, she tells Bo, the retarded son, go out and 
go out to the neighbors who are probably like an hour away or whatever walk and have them call the police to come here because Otis is acting like a maniac and he's going to hurt this poor girl. So this guy, this bow guy, he goes out and tries to go to the neighbor's house to make a phone call to help this girl. But what happens is that he gets killed by the same mysterious guy who killed the girl's husband. It's a little bit gruesome for a movie that came out in 1974. Bo winds up dead. They find him on the doorstep of this house. Otis gets pissed off and he blames, everyone starts blaming it on this girl, Helen, who just wanted to make a phone call. Otis makes Sarah, his other daughter, the, the, the daughter with the bad attitude, go to the neighbor's house this time. She actually bumps into the killer in the woods before he kills her, saying, Oh, let me help you. I don't like that whore or whatever. You know, she killed my brother. She gets strangled with the barbed wire. So eventually Otis is left. Otis and Helen and his wife, the sweetheart lady. And Otis is like, you know what? I'm going to go out there. I'm going to find my daughter. Hopefully the guy didn't kill her. So he goes out to look for her. And he finds her dead in, in the ground, and he bumps into the killer this time. <sighs> Somehow, the killer manages to steal the rifle from Otis and shoot him in the eye or whatever. Eventually, we are back into the house, and the wife is trying to tell the victim, Helen, how she's going to get away, you know, go around the lake, make a left here or whatever. And they're about to leave when all of a sudden a stranger breaks through the door. And at this point, we realize it's the first husband of the victim Helen which is a weird twist because this whole throughout the whole movie really don't learn anything about Helen except that she's a newlywed and her husband just got killed when they went up to the cabin that's all we knew and now this stranger comes into the movie saying oh I was in I was in a POW camp and you left me for Paul or whatever she's like I didn't know they told me you were dead or whatever and this guy looks exactly like Burt Reynolds it's kind of funny he has a mustache and all I just couldn't <laughs> couldn't get that image out of my head but he ends up going up to Helen to kill her because he's pissed that she left him for another guy which actually it isn't even her fault because she thought he was dead he but whatever so he goes up to the girl and he's about to like stab her or whatever and who comes crawling on the ground but Sarah, the girl who we thought got strangled with the barbed wire, she has Otis's gun, she shoots the first husband, and that's it. Um, which, I don't know, this just didn't make sense to me because I don't know how she could have crawled a mile or so all the way back to the house with a rifle in her hand and had the time to, to kill him. I don't know, it just didn't make sense that she would be able to crawl all the way back to the house, especially with a rifle. But and that's pretty much how the movie ends and then this weird thing happens where the, the wife is like don't worry Helen you can stay here with me and I'll take care of you and it kind of gives the impression that they're gonna live like what like a happy family just these two people we got this city girl and this country mountain lady and they're gonna be friends all of a sudden I don't know it's kinda weird now the movie also suffers from a few technical problems like in a few scenes you can actually hear the camera running um, if anyone if anyone actually ever used a film camera, it makes like a fluttering sound when the film's running through the camera. In some scenes you could actually hear it, which kind of sucks. And in other scenes in the woods, you can kind of hear like background noise of like being, it sounds like we're next to a highway, which kind of kills the movie because we're supposed to be really deep secluded in the wood, but you get this weird buzzing sound in the background, which sounds like cars coming by. So that's a weird technical problem. And the biggest problem is the cinematography with this movie. Not necessarily the camera angles, but the lighting is just really horrible. You got scenes where it starts off like in the daytime and it the next shot is nighttime and then the next shot after that is daytime and it's just all mixed up. The lighting is horrible and in some scenes it looks like we just have a spotlight right on the character. That's poor white trash too. This movie is an, is really creepy. I I enjoyed it. It's a really creepy, strange little movie from 1974. And in many ways, the year it came out makes you like the movie even more because it didn't copy anybody. Um, the character of Otis, he's a really uh, creepy, like redneck guy, and he really he really makes you scared of rednecks in this movie. And from what I hear, or from what I saw, I think the um, what was it? The Grindhouse releasing of Cannibal Holocaust had a trailer for this movie under the actual title, Scum of the Earth. And maybe they're going to release this one day on DVD, and I definitely think it deserves a DVD release. Um, I would love to see a better print of this movie. I really enjoyed it. Not the best movie, 
um, but probably one of the better Hick movies out there, or what some would call Hicksploitation, but I would suggest you get your hands on this. Yeah, so that's it. So this has been Paul with SlasherIndex.com. I hope you enjoyed this review, and I'll see you next time.